Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spear, I want slightly more power, and welcome to Age of Engineering Super Shorts. Now that I'm in age 6, I can, well, skip to age 7. Age 7 is the nuclear age, and by getting plutonium, I am presented with several options for more power. I plan the Advanced Generator's Gas Turbine, and I'm going to power it with rocket fuel. I've been doing some testing, and I managed to figure out how much gunpowder, redstone, sugar, and potatoes I need per minute or so. In order to get all that, I'm setting up four different systems. First system, a red orchid farm for redstone. I had all the redstone ore I needed thanks to my void ore miner, so I just needed to make a farming station. To run the farming station, I made an all-paper mattock with five reinforce modifier. It's literally unbreakable. For sugar, I have here the beginnings of a sugar cane farm. I did some calculations, I figured out that 32 sugar cane is about what I need to run this thing and I'm going to use a long-range breaker from Actually Additions, which breaks up to 8 blocks in front of it, to harvest the sugar cane. Four long-range breakers. I'm going to power it with an advanced photovoltaic cell and the second cables I still had lying around. The breakers consume 5 RF per block broken. And it's running. Next, I'm going to want to make an advanced greenhouse. Diamonds and an algorithm separator make weakened diamonds, four each. Lapis blocks in the same machine make large tanzanite. Advanced greenhouse. The greenhouse block needs power, a chest in front to store items, and these items to build the greenhouse. And when you've got everything, it'll automatically start building. And the greenhouse is built. I happen to have a potato lying around, so I'll put it inside the greenhouse. To speed up the process, I'm going to use worms and gas lanterns. Gas lanterns are made from lanterns, which run on fuel. Gas lanterns produce carbon dioxide, and the more carbon dioxide, the faster plants will grow. I've grabbed some bone meal so I can fill the greenhouse faster. The greenhouse is quite efficient. Last of all, I need to automate gunpowder. To that end, I've installed a few mods to the pack. The first one being Just Enough Calculation. Just Enough Calculation lets you put recipes together in groups. And if you program all the recipes, you'll get a list of all the materials you need, including procedure, extra output, and overall cost. The missing tab lets you know what items are missing from your inventory to create the recipe that you have set up. And thanks to the crafting calculator, I was able to get all the materials I need for a Woot Mob Factory Tier 1. I added the Woot mod because I play in peaceful mode. I freeze up when I fight, so naturally fighting the Ender Dragon was rather painful. Woot, however, allows you to automate the creation of mobs completely in peaceful mode. To get started with the mod, I'm going to need the yaw hammer and the seven dies. Conveniently, these are all the materials I need. The yaw hammer, the casing die, the connector die, the plate die, the shard die, the skull die, the mesh die, and the prism die. As you can see, the missing tab is now empty. Here, I have all the base materials needed for the Woot Factory Tier 1. First step, lots and lots of under iron. The Procedure tab gives you reasonable order to go through the recipes. I've made 44 nether brick, and when I put it into my inventory, it disappears from the Procedure screen. 11 nether brick, 22 pulverized under iron. Note, neither the mesh die nor the yaw hammer get used in crafting. Now for the first actual step, the mob prism, which lets me pick a mob. I'll need a mob prism frame. I'll also need several dies. The only thing I don't have is cactus green, and I don't have any deserts near me but I can make it with an egg and plant clippings and trimmings from Ender.io, which you can get relatively reliably from grass. Hence, these shears. Let's throw it in the sag mill and hope for the best. Lots of them. These loose twigs and prunies can be used to make cocoa beans. I just need six and an egg for cactus green. Now I have the mob prism. The thing about this is that I need to attack a mob, so I'm gonna go far away and kill a creeper. And now it's programmed. 36 under iron plates, 32 factory casings, the mob factory layout, which tells me how to place the thing. Red mob factory blocks. Gray mob factory blocks. Iron plated skulls. Factory connectors. Two factory caps. Two mob factory tier 1 capstones. A mob controller. Oops, more factory casings. Diamond shards. Emerald shards. Quartz shards. Tier 1 upgrade. Tier 2 upgrade. And a tier 3 upgrade. Make a mob factory spawner grinder. Now to set it up. Complete the multi block, I right click on the mob controller with the program prism. Power gets input through the bottom of the controller, but that's a lot of cables to run. So I'm going to use laser relays to transfer both my energy and my items. Eight energy laser relays. You need a chest in front of the mob factory to collect drops. I'll also need a laser wrench. 
Right click on a laser with a laser wrench to store it. And right click on another laser to connect them. And now our mob factory is spawning creepers and killing them for gunpowder and solidified experience. To transfer items from my sugarcane farm, I'm gonna need item laser relays. So I'll just cycle through an atomic reconstructor. I'll need an item interface to actually transfer the items. Item conduits extracting from the breakers into a chest. Item relays connecting to an item interface. And a hopper to pull the sugarcanes out of the chest. I've added a mechanical crafter from Extra Utilities 2 to make sugar. And now I'm extracting from the crafter in the chest with a filter for gunpowder and sugar. And I've got a conduit line taking the potatoes and the redstone. So all I have to do left is set up the vats. Before I set that up, I want to work out where my advanced generator is going to go. So we do have to make that first. So it's a very good thing I've already got the materials ready. Thanks, of course, to the crafting calculator. Let's just make sure I have everything. Looks like I'm missing plutonium and a refined circuit board. I already have 12 plutonium, but I'll need 6 more. My plutonium reactor isn't quite done yet, so I'll use my replicator instead. The intricate circuit board requires 3 different circuits from calculator, 4 reds and ingots, and 2 pure circuits quartz crystal, which I already processed. And, of course, a bucket of water. Refined circuit board achieved. I'll have for plutonium, I'll get started on the procedure. I'll need 48 advanced alloy turbine blades, a power I.O. module, 6 advanced alloy turbine rotors, which require 6 steel shafts, which are made from steel blocks and a metal former, 15 iron tubing, 3 pressure valves, 2 advanced pressure valves, 15 redstone iron wiring, a control circuit, 44 iron frames, just switching into my hazmat suit so I can handle this plutonium, done, and done. 6 pellets of RTG fuel, 6 advanced alloy turbines, 1 flux generator, 1 redstone control module, 1 gas mix compressor, more iron tubings, 1 fuel air mixer, 1 fluid intake valve, and one gas turbine controller. Advanced generators are freeform, so I can give it whatever shape I want. Thus, for the sake of least egregious dire wire, I'll place my flux generator, which emits the RF, right here. Fuel and air mixers and gas mix compressors work together to reduce fuel usage. A redstone control module lets you control different parts of your system with redstone. Each advanced alloy turbine produces 500 RF per tick. The fluid intake valve accepts fuel, and the gas turbine controller completes the multi-block and lets you interface with it. Two vats next to each other. The second vat pulling from the first and pushing into the valve. The first vat pulling from a reservoir, whose recipe is unchanged. Wiring. A lever to enable fuel use. And a completed build. I'll give it a bit to fill up, even running at full speed. It just barely has a net gain on rocket fuel. So as long as I keep it supplied, which I'm doing, I should have no problem at all. And that's it for today's episode. Next episode, well, I haven't quite decided on that yet. But it'll probably have something to do with age 6 or 7. I might set up a basalt system, for example, which I'll need for stable stone, for the deep dark, and other important things. Or maybe even jump into age 8. Either way, it's gonna be fun. As always, I'd love feedback and tips, perhaps even on what to do next. I hope you enjoyed!